Good morning, teammates. Dennis Lamasti here. It's, it's been a while, and I'm joined with, by my battle buddy, Command Sergeant Major Clark Sharpentier. Good morning, sir. It's good to be with you. Good again. to be back together. Our 51st virtual town hall. Uh, we'll continue these, like we said before, as many times as necessary. Um, on, a, on a somber note, um, we mourn the loss of 13 service members who died yesterday, yesterday uh, as a result of suicide bombings which occurred in Kabul Airport. Uh, may our, our heartfelt condolences go out to family and, and loved ones. Um, even before the deaths of, of our service members yesterday, there's, there's a lot of emotion up amongst those who have served in Afghanistan, and I'd just like to, to, to say before we launch into our dialogue here that uh, your feelings are okay, and if you need to reach out and talk about the events in Afghanistan, please do. And if someone asks you to listen to their experiences, please take the time to, to listen to them because they need to talk, and they've, they've reached out to you, and, and what, what greater honor is that than to be viewed as a, as a confidant? Uh, this week, um, some big changes with regard to DOD policy and COVID, and, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about this. We'll stay to the facts that we know up, 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 as of this moment, and there's still a lot of, of guidance to come out, uh, but the FDA has granted full approval, approval of the Pfizer vaccine. The other vaccines are, have, are seeking FDA approval, and they're not granted yet. Uh, the Secretary of Defense sent a letter to each of the services mandating the Pfizer vaccine for all service members. He did not describe a specific timeline, but he did state he would like an ambitious schedule. So uh, with no date set in the memo, uh, the word ambitious was used and right now the services are working through what that looks like. Uh, as we as we figure out a way to vaccinate those who have not yet been vaccinated. TRADOC guidance to date is to begin full vaccination of all service members compos one, two, and three, uh, and to use the Pfizer vaccine. Um, and right now for those who wish to defer, who do not want to uh, have the vaccine, uh, we are waiting further guidance from headquarters DA so that we can get the procedures established for how you would see an exception to policy or how the chain of command will handle, will handle vaccine refusals. Um, I can expect uh, additional uh, guidance that that's potentially there may be word coming forth on unvaccinated DA civilians, uh, as well as, and I mo mo mentioned a moment ago, the processing of service members exceptions and, and deferments uh, and whatnot. So uh, I know we all want answers now. Let's just wait. It's forthcoming. Uh, and as soon as we get that information, we will put it out. In fact, we may even have a, a, a uh, town hall special and not wait the, the regular two-week interval and, and meet again once we get more information and put that out so that everybody's current. And, of course, our great DCOM team will put this out on social media and as well as uh, – town halls and uh, outlook and whatnot. Remember, this is all about readiness and protecting the health of the force. Uh, and you don't have to wait to be told to get the vaccine. You can, you can still get the vaccine anytime you want. So our major. Yes, yes sir. So, you know, it, for, for everyone out there, as we work through the process, I, I urge and encourage and, and plead with you to continue to live the Army values. You know, thinking about your, your daily duties and uh, working through that along with your civilian soldier creeds and everything else that we abide by on a daily basis to accomplish our missions because you know as we go through this process everyone is still a valued member of the med coe team and the the, the goal is to treat everyone with dignity and respect and work through this process as they make their decisions and figure out what's best for them as we move forward. So uh, as the SECDEF memo stated, mandatory vaccinations are familiar to all of us as service members uh, because mission critical inoculation is almost as old as the military itself. Mm -hmm. I, I know that even all these years later, I still remember probably day one at the reception station at Fort Sill, Oklahoma, going through and getting the 
uh, of the slew of inoculations because I had decided to join this profession of arms. So, and I know that each one of us who wear the nation's cloth probably also have a similar memory of that. So, uh, this will just be another in the, the list of vaccinations to protect our force as we do our missions at home and abroad. Uh, so, uh, remember that uh, mandatory vaccination requirements will be implemented consistent with the DOD immunization program, which was signed back in July of 2019. It's all about our soldier readiness and our ability to accomplish our mission safely and being able to do it, whether it's at home or overseas. And uh, I encourage everyone, not just the soldiers, but family members, our civilians, and everyone else that uh, plays a part in ensuring the readiness of our force to don't wait get the vaccine, get the shot. And, you know, right now is probably a great time because, you know, here in South Central Texas, it does get warm in the summertime and you probably don't want to be waiting in those long lines. So go get it now before the lines come out. Absolutely, Sergeant Major. So other things going on in the command here. Yesterday was National Women's Equality Day. And last week, mid-COE, uh, we had the, our formal recognition of that, of that day. And I tell you, it was, it was great. To, to, to watch that. So some of you may not know that three of our four battalion CSMs are women of color and they did a very powerful rendition of the Soldier's Creed. Uh, it was fantastic. It was well done. Uh, it was motivating. I wanted, I wanted to be a CSM. And, and uh, it was just a great, great event and um, it was obvious a lot of work went into that. Command Sergeant Major Skaggs was our Master of Ceremonies and, and uh, outstanding narrator, and clearly we know what he needs to be doing um, in his retirement job. Uh, kind of a state of play with regard to HPCon, uh, Joint Base San Antonio, and graduation. So we are at Health Protection Condition Bravo Plus, and we're going to stay there. Uh, I, I, I really think we're going to stay there, and I'm pretty well informed on making that comment. Um, there's enough mitigation measures in place. We are a, a, uh, a vaccinated force. Uh, the majority of our, of our workforce uh, and our students are vaccinated. Uh, so it's, it's, it's safer than it was a, a year ago. We are still allowing uh, graduations to occur. Today, Foxtrot 232 uh, gradu had their graduation today and it was a wonderful event. And to see the, the loved ones and the family members there in the audience, it was, it's, it's a great way to start the day, I tell you. Um, for those who want to come, um, and we ask that you be graduated. I'm talking about family members and friends. Uh, and if you're not vaccinated, to, be, to, re, to provide a proof of a negative COVID test within the last 72 hours. And then, and then while we're doing that, we continue to wear our masks during the ceremonies. Um, and then also we are continuing to allow family visits for most of our AIT companies uh, unless the commander has identified if there is a problem and pauses the visits and that's powered down to the company level so I'm not going to intervene on that company commander's decision. Um, all of this could change but right now we are, we are still on glide path to continue with our graduations. I would encourage everyone for future graduations uh, to, to get Refundable tickets, travel insurance, I think is the word I was looking for, so that if something happens and we can't allow folks on post, that you will not be at a financial loss. So our mission has continued phenomenal effort by the entire team, military and civilian, over the past year and a half. I mean, maybe it's more than that. Uh, since COVID started, 90, we've executed 95% of our training portfolio, graduated over 31,000 students, conducted sterile and non-sterile movements for over 17,000 AIT soldiers, and not one of them has been sick when they arrived at first unit of assignment. Uh, and I'm exceptionally proud of the entire team, and I'm exceptionally proud of the personal discipline uh, of our soldiers uh, and our, and our their leadership uh, to ensure the health of the force. So with that, Tish, any questions out there? Yes, sir. Our 
basically number one for you, our most frequently asked workforce question since the updated MedCOE telework policy came down is about the requirement for those on situational telework to come into the office at least one work day per pay period. I know you answered this yesterday at our Voice to the Command, but please reiterate your guidance. Sure, it, it, great question and, and I understand uh, the interest. So we've got a, a, a very permissive telework policy that, that I'm comfortable with. You, you gotta come in one day uh, out of a two week pay period. And I think that's okay. Uh, there is concern amongst our teammates that, that they're about risk. What's the risk? Uh, like I just said a moment ago, we are, we are safer now than we were a year ago. We have protocols in place. We're wearing the masks. We understand the disease and how to manage it better, even though we're dealing with the Delta variant. We know the mask work. We know hand sanitizer work. We know social distancing work. We've got plexiglass b barriers up between desks. Um, and, and I think we're in a good place. For those who have comorbidities uh, and are high-risk high risk individuals, you can pursue reasonable accommodation, and I ask that you get with our, our HR staff uh, within the G1. And we can start the process for that. Uh, but right now, I said again, I, I don't think that you're going to find a more permissive uh, telework policy uh, on JBSA. Um, if you do, let me know. Uh, but, but I've got, done my homework pretty well. And so let's work within in the constraints of that telework policy. We still have to do work and we still have to be accountable. Account, accountable. Uh, and that includes everyone, so include myself. Thank you so much, sir. So, Major, for you, our number one question is always about graduations, but we've answered that one already. So moving on to another hot topic lately. My son or daughter was told that they could not have a family visit because it's HBCon Charlie. Wow. So great question, and, and, and I would say uh, I'm not personally aware of any companies or any of our organizations putting out that we're at HPCon Charlie because we are not. We have been at HPCon Bravo Plus for several weeks now and uh, I know during last week or uh, the last virtual town hall we mentioned that and, and I know we continue to mention that so uh, you know I would ask leaders at all levels to make sure that the HPCon level is clearly marked in uh, company locations outside of doors uh, which was directed by Joint Base San Antonio, and ensure that all personnel in your commands are tracking that. We want to eliminate any misinformation spread or incorrect communications. So we did open the graduations, as CG stated, and, and we did have one this morning, and we continue to support any of our AIT companies who can safely conduct family visits. And so most of our companies have been able to keep the privilege open. And through mask wear, through discipline, through uh, ensuring that people are doing the right things. And, you know, as the CG stated, if a company commander deems that the risk is too high, they may pause the visits uh, in select cases. And uh, not being aware of any specific instances, but uh, factors that would contribute to that is if there is a low vaccination rate in the unit. Uh, by uh, just because of circumstances and numbers or a direct increase in COVID cases in that particular organization or one where maybe uh, people are abusing the privilege. All of those go into the decision making of our commanders as they work through uh, these risk assessments. So, uh, but what I would encourage, you know, in the, in the space of information and information is so critical in making sure that we're getting correct information and I know that oftentimes there's misinformation that's out there whether it's uh, in, in a virtual platform or maybe a misunderstanding of how something is relayed orally uh, depending on the size of the formation or if uh, they're outside and maybe individuals are a little further away I understand that there may be miscommunication but what I encourage all service members all of our soldiers if they feel like they're getting misinformation or if they feel like uh, something has significantly changed that's going to impact them or their families, seek clarification. Reach out to the chain of command, the drill sergeant, the first sergeant, the company commander to get clarification to make sure that whatever it is that uh, you think you're hearing is actually what is being, uh, what is being said 
or if it is in print media on uh, social media sites, make sure that you're, you're conducting that follow-up with appropriate personnel, the chain of command, those that would have the correct information to ensure it's not uh, misinformation. So uh, I assure you we stay dedicated to making sure that uh, our families of our soldiers can be here supporting those families and that's something that's paramount as the Army is a family business and we know that you are dedicated to wanting to see your soldiers succeed and we thoroughly appreciate the fact that you want to be here with them as they cross this milestone in their career. Thank you so much, both of you, for answering those hot topic questions. And with that, we'll turn it over for closing remarks. Sorry, Major, any closing remarks? Sure. And, and so, you know, just a reminder to everyone in, in the local viewing audience here. So Brook Army Medical Center continues to offer the Pfizer vaccine to all DOD beneficiaries age 12 and older at the clinic on Main Post. Uh, and so beneficiaries can make a same-day appointment or use the walk-in hours. Bottom line, get the shot, get it now before the lines get long. For our soldiers, so we are ready and able to get all of our remaining soldiers vaccinated to comply with the mandate. Just know that this is gonna happen efficiently, expeditiously, and in a planned and controlled manner. So uh, just know that we want you to get your shots so that way you can continue to protect the force. So additionally, um, Yesterday afternoon, the CGN and I had the opportunity to go out and see our excellent drill sergeant, the Med COE Drill Sergeant of the Year, uh, Staff Sergeant David Wolnow, who actually uh, was at uh, Fort Jackson competing in the Army's Drill Sergeant of the Year competition when we originally had our awards presentation. So we went down to see him in his company area to present him his award for winning the Med COE Drill Sergeant of the Year. And uh, of note, it was absolutely great to see his spouse and children there to witness this, knowing the sacrifices and contributions that the Army family makes to our Drill Sergeant success. So uh, great honor to see him and the family out there doing that. And so uh, it was just a great honor and privilege to be out there to, to join with them for that particular moment in time. And finally, what I'd like to say, uh, just because I haven't said it in a while, is thanks. Thanks to every single instructor, whether civilian or military, every single drill sergeant, every single staff uh, supporting element, whether civilian or military, because you are the ones that's making our mission happen. And you are helping commanders at all levels ensure that the Army is getting what it needs and what is the requirement of our mission. Trained, relevant, fit soldiers who are ready to go where the Army needs them to go to save lives. So thanks to the entire team for doing that and for every family member that is standing behind those service members and those civilians, just know we can't do it without you. So thanks a lot for your continued support. Sir, back to you. Yeah, thanks, Sergeant Major. Um, Lots going on right now uh, with COVID and mandatory vaccination. It's a foot stomp, what Sergeant Major said. Uh, look to your chain of command for information. And, and I encourage you to, to stay away from the, the gossip on social media. We will be posting information on how we're gonna do COVID vaccinations on social media. So MedCOE or my, my uh, uh, my handle, Dennis Lamaster7, uh, have some imposter accounts, so look for the blue check mark. Uh, also, LinkedIn, and then the regular ways of, of Outlook, uh, and then just formal guidance coming down through chain of command. We will pause, take that requisite amount of time necessary to make sure we have the latest Army information before we share it. We're not going to get in front of the Army, and we're not going to speculate uh, because we want to make sure that you are well informed. So please. Please consider the source when you seek your information. Um, uh, emotions running high, the Afghanistan, uh, the tragedy yesterday, those who have served. Um, and so, like I said at the opening of this, this town hall, someone reaches out to you, uh, take, take a moment to, to pause and hear them out. And also by saying, 
Same token, if you're suffering on the inside and you want to talk, please reach out. Uh, there's a whole bunch of folks that genuinely care. I'm exceptionally proud of this entire formation and all the hard work we have done for the past year and seven, eight months or so uh, in these, these interesting times. Uh, who, who would have thought we would be in the middle of a pandemic for this long? But we have been, and we've been able to get after supporting our Army. Um, and uh, you've all done a fantastic job. Thank you so much. So stay positive, treat everybody with dignity and respect, and we'll see you on the high ground.